Man, I just cannot get over the instrumentals on this album. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Molly and in this video I am going to be listening to Remission, the debut studio album from the band Mastodon. Now Mastodon has been a very highly requested band here on my channel for a while. A lot of you want me to check their music out and Remission is their debut album. They released this one in 2002 and I figured I would just start with their first album and kind of see how they started off and yeah just see what I'm going to think of Mastodon's music. Alright so starting off with track one we have Crusher Destroyer. I love it. There's kind of a twanginess to the guitar at certain points. I love the sound of it. It just has a really playful quality to it. Well, that was track one, Crusher Destroyer. Definitely a great way to start this album off with all of that energy. I really liked how intense and visceral the vocals were, but then the instrumentals were really fun on that one. Like the guitar and the percussion and everything just kind of had this playful, almost like improvised quality to them, which I just thought was really unique. I liked that touch. But I'm gonna move on to track two, which is called March of the Fire Ants. Right off the start, I love this one. It has such a heaviness to it. I just love this sound. You have these really intense vocals. And then there's just something so fun about the instrumentals going on, like with the percussion and everything. It's actually reminding me a little bit of the Dillinger Escape Plan for that reason. Just like the fusion of fun, playful sounds and experimentation with so much harshness at the same time. <laughs> like this song is slowly building up now. I love this part. That percussion. <laughs> I just am really enjoying it on this album. Okay, that was an interesting transition from track two to track three, but that was track two, March of the Fire Ants. Absolutely loved that song. So, so good. The instrumentals were fantastic from beginning to end. I loved how heavy and like thunderous it sounded, but then the percussion was doing some really fun things toward the end there with like that guitar going on. Just again, really playful and experimental with its sound, but such a crushing weightiness to it as well. Moving on to track three, we have Where Strides the Behemoth. I love these instrumentals. I just can't get over it. They're so awesome. There's some interesting vocalizations going on with this one. Yeah, there's such a clear tone to that guitar. Well, that was track three, Where Strides the Behemoth. I feel like that's a very appropriate track title for that song because the word behemoth kind of brings to mind something like really heavy and strong and dense, which that song definitely had that quality to it. But then it also had this awesome rapidness, like a speediness to it, which I loved those two elements contrasted. All right, I'm gonna move on to track four, which is called Workhorse. Those 
vocals just came out of nowhere, bringing all the aggression with them. I think it's the bass that I'm hearing from time to time, very subtly. It's adding a nice little touch to this song. All right, then we had some ambient sounds at the end of that one, but that was track four, Workhorse. This whole album so far is just like a hammer coming at you. Like it's just bringing this really driving intensity to it. I love it. And that track was definitely no exception. It just had such an awesome heaviness to it. Those vocals too, like right off the bat, they just brought so much energy to them. Okay, up next is track five, which is called Ol' Nessie. Again, I really like the tone of this guitar here at the start. It has a really clear quality to it. All right, now it's like the song just kind of opened up a little bit. There's almost a softness to this one. And I'm hearing some strings too, kind of in the background. I think it's an acoustic guitar. Again, it's just adding like a softer touch to this one. It's like this track just keeps growing. It keeps expanding. They just continuously like add new elements to it. I can't get over the percussion. They just add these little things from time to time that are like a nice little touch sprinkled in that changes the sound up a little bit. Yeah, this more acoustic portion of this song actually is kind of giving me some Dev Heaven-ish vibes. That was track five, Ol' Nessie. Something weirdly delicate about that song. It feels strange describing the sound of it as delicate because it had so much intensity, like especially with the vocals, but they had little touches of like that acoustic guitar and a bit of a softer edge to the sound of that one that it just kind of had this weirdly relaxing nature to it. But I'm gonna continue on with track six, which is called Burning Man. Okay, the relaxing quality is gone. I'm picking up on that bass again that I mentioned on one of the previous tracks. It's really subtle, but it's a cool sound. percussion just keeps changing up its tempo like it'll be really steady and hammering for a second and then it'll just get really speedy and quick Well, that was track six, Burning Man. I love how they put that one right after track five, Ol' Nessie, because we had that kind of more gentle, slightly more restrained song. And then I think Burning Man was probably the most like rapid speedy of all the tracks on this album so far. Again, just those guitars bringing so much energy and impact to their sound. All right, up next is track seven, which is called Trainwreck. Right, more ambient stuff. And very fittingly with the track name, it sounds like a train station. Again, such an amazing clarity to the sound of this guitar. Nice. Now it's bringing that heaviness. Right. 
there's almost like a slight staticky sounding quality to these guitars at times too. I don't know exactly how to describe it. It just kind of has like a fuzziness to them. Man, I just cannot get over the instrumentals on this album. The guitars and then that percussion just, oh, it just works so, so well together. That was track seven, Trainwreck. I really can't get over this album. I'm just enjoying it so, so much. And that track was no exception. The instrumentals just blew my mind on that one, especially at the end there. Like they were just bringing so much intensity and variety to the sound with just the guitar and the percussion alone. They were doing so much with it. And I love how clear this album sounds. There's kind of a weird like fuzziness to the guitar and yet it sounds really sharp and clear at the same time. I don't know if that exactly makes sense, but that's what I'm picking up on and I'm just really enjoying it. But I'm just going to move on to track eight, which is called Trampled Under Hoof. A lot of these track titles are just conjuring images to me of like very heavy things in my head, which I think is very fitting for the sound of the album. <laughs> So much intensity to the vocals. There's almost like a strange distortion to them too, I think. Or maybe I'm just hearing things, but it almost sounds like there's this like slight garbled quality to them. And now we've got this little part that's kind of jazzy almost. That was track eight, Trampled Under Hoof. It kind of reminded me a little bit of track six, Burning Man, in how it just was really speedy. Like that was such a quick, fast paced song. And it really did sound like you were being trampled. It just had such an amazing heaviness to it. I mentioned earlier, it's almost like this album is just like a hammer, just hitting you over the head with so much intensity. And that track was a great example of that. All right, up next is track nine, which is called Trilobite. <laughs> I loved that build up at the start. It's like that song just progressively built up and now it's got this immense quality to its delivery. I just love how it's so calm and kind of weirdly relaxing and then they just bring that heaviness. It just like wakes you up out of this slumber almost. The vocals are just unrelenting with their power. I love it. They're just letting everything out, you can tell. Track nine, Trilobite. Parts of that song were so subtle. Like at the end there, it was really restrained and like calmed down. But then when the vocals would come in, man, they just brought so much intensity to them. This whole album is just such a delicate balance of calmness and then like visceral intensity and heaviness. And they're just balancing the two so amazingly well. I love it. Moving on to track 10, we have Mother Puncher. All right, some cowbells, it sounds like.
Yeah, they're doing a lot of change-ups with the rhythm and everything with these songs. Like, you'll kind of get into a little bit of a groove, and then they'll just change it up on you. Man, that guitar tone is just so clear sounding. I love it. It's actually reminding me a tiny little bit of like Diamond Eyes or Corno Yokon by Deftones. It kind of has a similar quality to its sound. <laughs> That was track 10, Mother Puncher. Such a sludginess to that one. And I loved how they were changing up like the rhythm and everything a lot. It just kind of kept you on your toes. You never really knew what to expect. So moving on to the final song on Remission, we have track 11, which is called Elephant Man. All right, it sounds like we're in a windstorm or something. There's all this ambient noise going on. All right, it sounds like we have that acoustic guitar back on this one. Yeah, again, they're bringing kind of a softer quality to their sound on this last track. I really like how they're meshing this with all that intensity. We got the electric guitar coming in now. All right, and now it kind of sounds like that ambient sound is coming back of the storm, how the song started. So it faded out and now it's just quiet. Now it's just like a bunch of staticky noise. It's like the storm has been amplified. It went from being in like a windstorm and now you're in the middle of a tornado or something. All right, well, I guess that is track 11, Elephant Man, the final song on Remission. Interesting way to end this album with all of that static, kind of just like a white noise there at the end. But the main portion of that track was just awesome, I thought. Completely instrumental, no vocals. I loved the guitar solo there toward the end. It just brought this funkiness to it. Again, kind of like a jazzy quality, more of their playful side. But then they had like kind of a calmer, more acoustic portion to that song as well. And yeah. Yet again, they just fused all of that brilliantly, I thought. All right, well, that sums up my reaction to Remission, the debut studio album from the band Mastodon. This album was absolutely fantastic. I loved every second of it. So, so entertaining to listen to. I loved how heavy it was, but it had this awesome, fun, kind of jazzy quality to it at times. Very experimental with its sound. The instrumentals, I thought, were absolutely amazing from beginning to end. Just everything worked so well together. I'd say track two, March of the Fire Ants, was for sure a standout. It just had so much energy to it, and those guitars, just the sound of those guitars was amazing. And also track seven, Trainwreck, was just a bit different. Uh, I liked how it started out with that ambient sound in the train station, and the vocals were a little bit different too on this one. But I can absolutely see why you all have been recommending Mastodon to me for so long in the comments, because based on this first album of theirs, their music is absolutely incredible. I love it, and I will definitely, definitely be checking out more of Mastodon's discography, that's for sure. But yeah, as usual, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned, and I will see you in the next video.